It's a hard pill to swallow, but you can't just pick up the third entry in a video game trilogy and expect to know what's going on. That's like watching the series finale of Breaking Bad and thinking you'll figure out the plot along the way. That's why we love standalone titles. There's no lore to read up on and no back catalog of prequels to play before you can jump in. Well, we're about to blow your mind. It turns out some of the standalone games you've been playing have been entries, spin-offs, and side stories in big-name franchises all along, though not always the ones you'd expect. Tomodachi Life The Nintendo 3DS's Tomodachi Life wasn't exactly a system seller. That said, those who did play the bizarre Sims-like game retreated to a life simulation gem full of character customization, budding romances, and rap battles. It's delightfully strange, and its sense of humor is very Japanese. This is my favorite. Come on. Unfortunately, that's the language you'll need to understand if you want to play more of the kooky titles in the Tomodachi franchise. That's right, all the way back in 2009, Japan received an exclusive title on the Nintendo DS called Tomodachi Collection. That game set the stage for what life would ultimately expand on by putting Miis at the forefront of the experience, letting players complete jobs and purchase items to level up and progress in the game. Rune Factory the Rune Factory series first arrived on the Nintendo DS back in 2006. Since then, the part farming sim, part dungeon crawler has seen five sequels and offshoot titles released across a number of different platforms. If you ignore the whole slaughtering monsters part for a sec, that whole farming thing sounds sort of like another game series you might have played. Harvest Moon Well, that's because Rune Factory is a Harvest Moon spin-off series. In fact, Harvest Moon franchise producer Yashifumi Hashimoto has straight up described Rune Factory as Harvest Moon where you wield a sword. And in terms of game mechanics, that's a pretty apt description. Time in Rune Factory passes just like it does in Harvest Moon. One second in the real world equals one minute in the game, and farm equipment can be upgraded in Rune Factory just as it can in the series it's spun off from. Hyrule Warriors at first glance, Hyrule Warriors seems like the type of game you'd expect from Nintendo. It features Link, along with a whole bunch of other characters from the Legend of Zelda universe, swinging weapons around on an open battlefield against hordes of Hyrule's most notorious bad guys. The Zelda games are already known for their action combat, so this game isn't a huge departure from what the series already offers. But that's only half right. In reality, Hyrule Warriors belongs to an entirely different franchise that longtime gamers already know all about. Hyrule Warriors was developed by Koei Tecmo, the same brains behind the long-running Dynasty Warriors games. In fact, the Japanese developers boast a whole slew of sprawling hack-and-slash titles that borrow worlds and characters from other franchises. So, while Hyrule Warriors features a cast of familiar heroes and locales, it's as much part of the Dynasty Warriors series as it is the Legend of Zelda universe. Ghosts and Goblins if you had the Nintendo Entertainment System or knew someone with an NES growing up, there's a good chance you played Ghosts and Goblins. It was a must-have, the Dark Souls of its time. But you younger gamers may be smugly asking, if Ghosts and Goblins was great, why didn't it have any sequels? Well, it did have sequels, they just weren't called Ghosts and Goblins. Duh. Ghosts and Goblins was actually the opening act in a pretty lengthy series of games. After Ghosts and Goblins was released in 1985, a sequel called Ghouls and Ghosts skipped the NES entirely releasing on other platforms in 88. The franchise made a welcome return to Nintendo in 1991 when Super Ghouls and Ghosts hit the SNES console. Okay, kid. This is where it gets complicated. Four more games dropped in the mainline series between 1999 and 2010. A spin-off series called Gargoyle's Quest had three entries on its own from 1990 to 1994. And yet another spin-off series called Maximo lived exclusively on the PlayStation 2 between 2001 and 2003. 